welcome to NASA Launchpad. I'm your host, Amber Whalen. What do radios, microwaves, and x-rays have in common? Well, radios play music, microwaves are a fast and easy way to cook food, and x-rays allow us to see our insights from the outside. So how do these three things have a common link? They're all part of a broader spectrum, the electromagnetic spectrum to be exact. This is a name that scientists have given to all different types of radiation that travel in waves. So we can listen to our favorite music for free because the radio station emits radio waves. But did you know that stars, planets, and even gases in space emit radio waves too? Even our own sun creates radio waves. Take a look at this. This is a solar flare on our sun. On the right, you see radio waves. When the sun flares, so do the radio signals. Okay, so enough with the radio waves. There are even more interesting types of radiation out there. Like I said, many different types of radiation can be found on the electromagnetic spectrum. From the radio waves we talked about, to microwaves, infrared, and visible, that's the portion of the spectrum that we can see with our own eyes, to ultraviolet, x-ray, and gamma rays. The higher you go on the spectrum, the higher the energy gets. The radio wavelengths are very long, whereas gamma ray wavelengths are very short. Here's our sun again. Each color you see represents radiation from different parts of the electromagnetic spectrum. By looking at the sun in different wavelengths, we are able to notice different features. What's the term x-ray mean to you? Broken bones at the hospital, right? Well, high energy x-rays are very useful for more than looking into our bodies. Many different x-ray telescopes have enabled us to explore the universe. We have learned about black holes, neutron stars, and supernovas, among other phenomena. So, you might wonder, why do we want to see gamma rays? Well, some of the most interesting objects throughout our universe emit a good portion of their light as gamma rays. However, it's not visible to the naked eye. So to learn more, engineers and scientists created the Gamma Ray Large Area Space Telescope, or GLASS. Launched in June of 2008, the telescope was renamed Fermi, after Professor Enrico Fermi, a pioneer in high energy physics. Fermi now orbits Earth and creates images of our universe. Okay, so maybe I haven't been clear on how incredibly powerful gamma rays are, and what makes them so worthy of study. A single gamma ray burst, like from the death of a star, is so forceful that for a brief moment in time, it actually outshines the entire universe. That's pretty powerful if you ask me. How about another powerful force in the universe? A black hole. But get this, even a black hole, which is infamous for pulling in matter, even light, actually pushes away matter in jets that move at over 99% of the speed of light. Guess what's inside these jets? You got it gamma rays, and a whole lot of them. Fermi will help scientists study why this happens. Take a look at this. Fermi sends this image back to Earth. It combines 95 hours of images of the sky and gamma rays emitted. If you look close, you'll see that's our own Milky Way galaxy right there in the center. There are immensely powerful gamma rays coming from our own galactic backyard. It kind of makes you realize how big things really are and how much we still need to know about what's going on out there. Whoa. Until next time, I'm Amber Whalen, and thanks for watching NASA Launchpad.